Transformers Cyber Missions is a thing that exists. A series comprised of 13 shorts set in the movieverse continuity made to advertise the toys. Cyber Missions is just... spectacular. It was made in 2010, the same year as Megamind, and Toy Story 3, and Transformers Prime. TF Wikinet tells me it was produced by TG Studios, who apparently were initially told they had 11 months to create it, before Hasbro changed their minds and told them 3 months. Which explains a lot. If you thought Combiner Wars was bad, then oh boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. In this video, we're going to be journeying into the wonderful experience that is Transformers Cyber Missions. Oh god. Alright, let's get right into it. Welcome, friend. So we open with a horrifying demon introducing us to the basics of the show. You got the Autobots and the evil Decepticons. Pretty self-explanatory. Then we're left with the best CG models of Ironhide and Bumblebee I've ever seen. So basically, Ironhide leaves Bumblebee to defend the nest based by himself, and then suddenly a giant floating cross appears. Oh wait, no, that, that's Soundwave. Wouldn't you agree, Optimus? Thank you. I'm not as small as you think, Soundwave. And then Ironhide goes to fight Bludgeon and they exchange some truly brutal smack talk. I will extinguish your spark beneath my treads. You know, I was sorta of hoping it was you, Bludgeon. What's that human phrase? Bring it! Meanwhile, Bumblebee realizes that Soundwave's only weakness is bullets, and then beats him by shooting at him a lot. The arms Meanwhile, Ironhide gets wrecked. <laughs> to be continued, yay. Oh boy, I'm in for a treat with these. You know that full of Cybertron trailer that makes me need to change my pants whenever I see it? Imagine if it looked like this. The animation here rivals freaking Veggie Tales. Alright, episode two. Do not engage Bludgeon until. Oh god, the stock green screen effects are amazing. Water and strangling leaves. Okay, so apparently Einheim can not only teleport, but also disappear momentarily. And also grow weapons, okay. Hate to admit it, Bludgeon, but I think we're stalemated here. Equal but opposing forces cancel each other out. Or maybe you just shoot him with that organically grown gun. Join the Autobots, and maybe Optimus Prime will offer you amnesty. Okay, great, we're doing this One now. For those wondering how this tale of two sexy young lovers ends, basically, Bludgeon refuses. Some guy called Mabytron exists, apparently. Mabytron? And then he confesses his love for Ironhide. However, when Ironhide tells Bludgeon that he already has a boyfriend, Bludgeon throws himself off a cliff in sadness. I mean, I think that's what happened anyway. In the third episode, Lockdown shows up. Lockdown is on the loose, and the two of you have a certain violent history. Yeah, violent history, eh? Oh, you have no idea. Sorry, Optimus, you startled me. I was just pee pee down humans, but I come fully loaded. So then Ratchet displays his teleporting ability and somehow manages to clip through the building and onto the freeway. Then after the most exciting chase sequence of all time... Great. More collateral damage for Nest to explain. Ratchet manages to slow Lockdown down. Just stand still for half a picosecond so I can dampen your spark with my pee. Lockdown slaps the shit out of Ratchet. And size matters, old foe. And then he takes his blaster and leaves. The end. Wow, that was... That sure was exciting. In the fourth episode, Optimus and Sideswipe go in search of Megatron after catching wind of his signal, but are unable to find hit. Um, Sideswipe. How do you not- Again. We're always just one step behind Megatron. I didn't edit that clip at all, okay? Megatron is just that stealthy. Then they engage in an epic battle or whatever. Mind if I cut in? <laughs> Sad thing is, Sideswipe received more screen time in these two minutes than he did in the entire two films. Or two. It's all the same, just- oh. Ah yes, not even Megatron can resist the agony of stubbing his toe. If only Optimus had known that, he could have ended the war a lot sooner. Then Megatron escapes. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need detailing after- In the fifth episode, apparently Einheim's gone missing after his epic duel with Bludgeon and has resorted to talking to himself. As well as you think you do, Ironhide. Then he walks into a cave filled with Energon and then gets possessed by Count Von Count from Sesame Street. Bring it to me, 
iron hide. He really wants nuggets for some reason. Bring every last nugget to me. Oh, wait, surprise, it was mine white. I should have known. Oh, hi, Optimus. Where the hell did you come from? Who dares to trespass within my Energon Sanctuary? <laughs> Release Ironhide, you Decepticon <laughs> parasite. And the day is saved. Yay! And soon both of you will be in my hypnotic throat. Episode 6 sees Sideswipe in hot pursuit of Barricade. And Sideswipe just brutally assaults Frenzy. Yep, just destroyed him. And then the two have an epic standoff. Why did it take so long to hit him? He's standing right in front of him. So then Barricade agrees to Sideswipe's terms of a sports tournament. And so they play tennis and then soccer. And then Barricade wins and Sideswipe gets frozen or something. No, not the swords. And then he just stands there as Barricade escapes. Right. In the seventh episode, after the devastating beatdown that Lockdown laid down on Ratchet, he has to be repaired and also turn into Yoda, apparently. Impressive. Mm. Sideswipe reveals he traded his broken swords for guns for some reason instead of just getting new swords. Everything patched, welded, and sealed. All about my pee blaster. Then after Sideswipe laments over the fact that he has no idea how to use guns, Lockdown breaks into the nest base. Yeah, we're running those guns now, eh? And then Ratchet comes back and Lockdown runs away because of how incredibly powerful Ratchet is, apparently. And then he gets beaten by his one true foe, the Medical Bay. And then basically Ratchet orders the Bay to freaking kill him. Let's add some elective procedures. <laughs> in episode 8, Bubblebee's in the Arctic. Oh, and there's Ironhide. So I think it's supposed to look like they're training, but it honestly just looks like Ironhide's beating the crap out of him. You think the Decepticons underestimate me, Ironhide? They think you're small, and therefore of little consequence, Bumblebee. Really? <laughs> so transform and improvise. That's what Autobots do. Oh yeah, you're one to talk, Ironhide. <laughs> So then after sharing a very intimate moment, Ironhide realizes there's a flower and goes on about how Autobots protect all life and all that. Remember what Prime told you. We defend all sentient life. Even the small things that might otherwise seem of little consequence. Yeah, okay. I'm really glad you guys care about such an important message. Oh yeah, right. Episode 9. So in this one, basically a Decepticon named Smolder allied with a minicon called Chopster start peeing on a building. Ratchet and Bumblebee go to intercept him. Gonna chop yous into twisted metal bits, big bots. This is real. This is a finished product. Someone made this. And then they do an epic battle matching the proportions of the movie, and then Ratchet freaking kills him and finishes it off with the roast of the century. Fire truck that shoots fire? Well, you know the Decepticons. They think they're all hot and stuff. If it wasn't made clear, all of these episodes range from about 3 to 4 minutes, so they're incredibly anticlimactic. Episode 10, almost at the end. Mime wipes back and he's found a friend named Jack whose face resembles Mime while watching this show. <laughs> How did they get out here? Why are they here? How would some random guy know where the Energon is? Oh, and apparently Starscream is Mime wipes master. So they go to steal some Energon from Ratchet and Sideswipe, and then he wipes their mind or something. I don't know, I'm not really following anymore. My pleasure. So they do battle because, of course, Sideswipe remembers he can turn off his audio receptors and play some Jake Paul. It's every day. Noise. Yes. And then breaks free from Mime Wipe's Mime Wiping. Ratchet freaking kills Mime Wipe and then pushes the Energon off a cliff so Starscream can't get his hands on it. Then apparently his EMP is for some reason able to blow it up and he kills Mime Wipe again. But Starscream escapes even though he was right next to the Energon and then the day is saved. You sensing a pattern here? At all? No? Oh god, three more and I'm done. Try explaining to Prima you broke human law and got a speeding ticket. Or maybe it's the two gigantic cannons on your back, you dumb fuck. <clears throat> what seems to be the problem, officer? <laughs> Wait, that's not a police officer. Oh no, Ironhide's cornered by two Decepticons. What is he ever to do? If only they didn't attack him one by one and then get defeated like idiots. The contrast to the movies here is hilarious. Ironhide covers Barricade in rocks and then lets Lockdown run away. 
instead of, you know, dismembering. This is one of the funniest of all 12 to me, simply because of how pointless it is. More so than that episode where Bumblebee and Ironhide make out. No one accomplishes anything. It doesn't progress the plot, just shows Barricade getting a beatdown and Lockdown running away like a crying baby. And also some heroic dialogue from Ironhide, but whatever. Episode 12, two to go, baby. I've gotten this long without mentioning it, but in this show, Bumblebee doesn't talk through his radio. He just randomly switches voice every five words or so in a failed attempt to emulate the same effect. Neither Decepticon has done much to conceal himself from human eyes, and they've left a virtual trail that's easily triangulated. Sorry, what? In this one, Bumblebee has apparently located Megatron and Starscream. Starscream then meets up with Megatron, and they communicate telepathically, apparently. Sure. Then Optimus shows up to fight an epic battle with that powerful Decepticon. I shouldn't have to tell you that our two most dangerous Decepticon foes are Megatron and Starscream. Ooh, this is it, the epic final battle. Oh. Okay, I guess we're here now. Oh, oh, we're back, okay. Have you learned nothing during this long conflict? The Autobots are never far from my side. Yeah, except when they weren't. <laughs> And then the Autobots beat the Decepticons and apparently tapping Megatron a few times was enough to fatally wound him. And then Megatron runs away. But he'll think that we've given up. On the contrary, by showing even one such as him the power of mercy, Megatron might realize that we'll never give up. Oh my god, are you serious? Alright, here it comes, the epic finale. This is gonna be good. In this one, the Decepticons all meet up and rescue Samway from... A bullet train. But it was all a ruse, and Megatron seems incredibly upset about that. Like, he seems really emotionally hurt. No! 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 It's a trap! Here come the Autobots in one last epic final confrontation. Who, who cares anymore? <laughs> That's not... What? So then they fight for, like, a really, really long time. Wait, where the hell was Sideswipe? And barricade. Again! Again you skip out on the final battle! You seriously underestimate us, Prime. My Decepticons will never serve. And you're just gonna let them go? Bludgeon taking some last casualties and you lose there. And then Megatron runs off. That's it. Ooh, Bumblebee pulling out the sick moves. How exactly they defeat the Decepticons by letting them all escape again is completely beyond me. Bumblebee? What are you doing? I thought the Decepticons needed a reminder. Something they could see from far, far away. Oh shit, how did- how did you- What the hell is this show? And that's it. Wow, what a- what a masterpiece. It should go without saying that all of the complaints I have for things like Energon or Time's Return are completely echoed with Cyber Missions. Once again, the CG models look really cool up close, but in motion... Meh. It also utilizes laughably bad green screen effects and has appalling sound design. Hmm, that sounds familiar. But hey, it was kinda cool to see Mime Wipe and Bludgeon in the Movieverse continuity. So there's that. Cyber missions is such a strange thing to me. Because it seems like a lot of work put into something for no real reason. It was an advertisement, sure, but was it an effective one? Probably not. The only thing this show makes me want to do is cry myself to sleep hoping Optimus doesn't fire me, oh god. I feel really bad for the studio who worked on it due to their rush deadline. And that deadline really shows when you watch Cyber Missions in its entirety. I originally watched Cyber Missions back when I was a kid, and even then I thought something was rather odd about it. I wonder why. Still, I did enjoy it back then, and I guess that was the target audience at the time. So well done, TG Studios. You win this round. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, and it's certainly forgivable considering the deadline they had, but... Uh. The oddest thing, though, is the fluctuation of views on YouTube. Some have less than 400k, while others have close to 3 million views with minimal amounts of likes and a barren wasteland of a comment section. Hmm, Hasbro, you wouldn't be viewbotting, would you? Whatever the case, Cyber Missions... exists. Still better than Energon.